Matthias Utzler from uh, the University of Augsburg is going to uh, talk uh, um, about uh, gluing classifying topos. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so first of all, it's a great honor to give a talk here at this conference and thank you to the organizers, to the organizers and especially to Olivia uh, for organizing this great conference. Um, yes, my talk will be about gluing classifying topos and um, let me say right away, um, sorry. So by classifying toposes, I always mean for geometric theories. So actually I could also have called the talk gluing geometric theories. And by gluing, um, I do not mean the classical Artin gluing construction, but I mean gluing along open subsets. So like uh, doing where I have overlaps um, of the toposes I want to do, and these overlaps are open subtoposes. So um, yeah, I'll take the perspective in this talk that um, the only nice way to present a quote de topos is by a geometric theory, <laughs> as opposed to the previous talk. Um, of course, it's not the only nice way, but um, I take the perspective that I want to know a geometric theory for every Kotendik topos that I need. And of course, um, if I have a geometric theory, then um, the topos is, is presented by the theory in the sense that it is uh, the classifying topos for the theory T. And um, if I have this perspective, then there's a natural question how to calculate with these presentations of topos, how to calculate with theories. Um, the calculate, I mean, uh, what constructions of toposes do we know? And in particular, I'm thinking um, of toposes as generalized spaces, so what constructions of spaces do I know, and uh, how to implement them in this uh, presentations as theories um, perspective. And of course, um, for every topos, there is a theory which is classified. We can always take the theory of continuous flat functors, um, but we want uh, concise geometric theories. Otherwise, it's not a nice, a nice presentation of my topos. So it's, it's known that for some toposes, there's a really nice concise geometric theory, which is uh, much shorter to write down than the definition of the topos via a site. And um, it feels much more elementary. And I think this is a good thing to have. So um, we will always look for concise geometric theories, at least um, as concise as can be. So here's the first example. What if I start with two topuses, classifying theories T1 and T2, and I take their product. Product in the sense of topuses or spaces, not in the sense of categories. The product category would be the co-product topos, but I mean the product topos here. So I really imagine this as the product space. And um, in this case, we can give the answer quite easily. Um, this is the classifying topos for a new theory, namely the theory where we have just took all the stuff from T1 and all the stuff from T2 and put it together disjointly. So all, all the sorts, of T1 and T2, all the symbols of the axioms. So the disjoint union of theories is the product of toposes. And to see this um, is not hard. If we start from the right, then we have to see that um, geometric morphisms, which I just write on now, geometric morphisms from the test topos T to the classifying topos of T1 plus T2. Well, these are models of the theory T1 plus T2, but a model of the theory T1 plus T2, since T1 and T2 have nothing, nothing in common, there's no connection, it's just a model of T1 and a model of T2, because I have to interpret every sort of T1, and every sort of T2, and so on. So this is just a pair of models. Uh, T1 model in T and uh, T2 model in T. So to be a bit more precise, I should write equivalence here. And uh, yeah, of course, this is the uh, 
um, universal property of the product. So this is quite obvious. Um, so we've, we've uh, seen our first um, uh, construction with theories, uh, but now let's turn to the co-product of toposes, which is the simplest case of gluing, right? If I have two toposes and I glue them trivially, I glue them not at all, that means I take the co-product and um, well, in this, in this case, um, what is the new classified theory? I would say it's not so obvious. So um, it has something to do with T1 and T2, but um, a model of this new theory is a morphism into this disjoint union. So it does not contain a model of T1 or a model of T2, but only models of T1 and T2 on some parts of the domain topos. So um, this is not as obvious as before. And the more general question, um, which will be the central question in this talk is, if I have a topos E and I can cover it by toposes um, where I know a classified theory, where I know a syntactic presentation. And I should say that these are supposed to be open subtoposes. So if I can cover a topos by open subtoposes and have a syntactic presentation for these open subtoposes, how do we construct a syntactic presentation for the whole topos E? This is our central question. And it will be, I will give an answer uh, in the end. Um, but before we have to, uh, we have to see some uh, constructions with our uh, theories because, um, well, it won't be so simple what, what's written here, but it will still be um, of a kind where I would say that uh, in many applications, uh, if you really calculate the construction, then what comes out is again, a really concise uh, theory if the TVIs that you started with were concise schematic theories. And here's a natural example, which uh, was the motivation for this question. Namely, if I take a scheme, a scheme X um, always admits a cover by open subschemes, which are affine. So let's fix such a cover. X is the union of the affine schemes spec AI. Then we would like to know what the big Zariski topos of X classifies. And if in the, in the affine case, spec AI, the big Zariski topos of spec AI, and I put finitely presented here because we have to use the site with only um, schemes of locally finite, locally finite presentation over spec AI. Um, this big Zariski topos classifies local AI algebras. And I mean, it depends on the, the ring AI, but if uh, I know a nice, um, maybe finite presentation of the ring AI, maybe also not finite, um, then I have a nice uh, concise uh, formulation of this geometric theory. But what about the general non-affine case? And it is true that this cover by uh, affine schemes induces a cover of the big Zariski toposis, but we need, we need some machinery to um, construct the theory classified by the big Zariski topos of X. Okay. So um, we'll have to ask next the question, what is our preferred syntactic presentation of geometric morphisms? Because you see, um, as you might already have, have guessed, uh, this construction here will not only depend on the theories TI, but there has to be some gluing data of the TI in the sense that we should also look and see intersections of these open subtoposes. And we have to need, uh, we, we need syntactic presentations of these intersections and of the inclusions of the embeddings of these intersections into the set TI. So, Let's just ask more generally, what about a general geometric morphism, how to present it? And my answer here in this talk is, uh, we should uh, present it by extensions of geometric theories. And um, by these extensions, I mean uh, that we're not only um, allowed uh, to add axioms, but we can add sorts, relation and function symbols, and also absence. Of course, all these are optional. Um, and this is the 
yeah, this is the definition I want to work with. Um, the same thing is called expansions in Olivia's book, The Recites Topuses. Um, I think for, for me, the, the name extension is a bit more natural. Um, okay, and a word about notation. So when I can add arbitrary things, but I have to keep the things that were present in the base theory T, then I could write T subset, you know, sense of sort symbols and axioms as subsets of those of some theory T prime. But uh, actually, I want to look um, at the expand. I want to look at the extension as a first class object. So the extension is something I really care about. It's not just the theory T and T prime. So it would rather write this as T prime can be decomposed into T plus some extension. So I give the extension itself, which contains some sort symbols and axioms, but it, it does not have to be a theory in itself because the symbols and axioms can also use sorts from T. So this uh, extension gets a symbol E. And I also um, think about these extensions as kind of morphisms, of course. So um, I sometimes uh, write an arrow from T to T plus E. And this corresponds to the fact that, of course, if I have a T plus E model in a topos, in any topos E, then I can forget the E part of the model. Uh, so I have a functor to T models in E. And this, we could call this U, because it's a forgetful functor in this sense. And uh, of course, this is induced by a geometric morphism, which we might want to call pi, um, because it's kind of a protection from the generalized space of all T plus E models to the generalized space of all T models. Okay, and um, while I uh, do sometimes write an error, I want to stress that um, I do not define a notion of morphism of theories here, um, as opposed to uh, two other things which are more general. Firstly, Morphisms of theories in the sense of Vickers, Steve Vickers, um, which um, here you are allowed to give a map from the sorts of, of the first theory to the sorts of the second theory. And similarly for um, the symbols and axioms which um, is still completely syntactical, one might say, um, but it allows to identify two sorts, for example. And I do not want to allow this um, in my setup here because I want to be really, really explicit about my theories. I, want, I really want to think about them as syntactical objects. And um, I do not want to identify things if, I, if I, I'm in a situation, if I am in a situation where I want to identify two sorts, then I will instead introduce a bijection between these sorts, which is something I can do. It's, it's an extension. Um, okay, so this is a more general notion. And another more general notion is interpretations. Um, in the sense of Olivia Caramello. Um, so it's, uh, it's described in, in the book, theory science topuses, and uh, their interpretation of one theory in, in another theory is defined to be, so for geometric theory, it's um, a geometric functor between the classifying, uh, between the syntactic sites. Oops. Geometric factor. So these are totally fine notions, of course, and um, the the only reason I, I look at it in a different way is because I want to be really explicit how I can build up theories. So these extensions are about building up complex theories from simpler theories. And in particular, um, these notions here um, uh, are um, appropriate to turn um, the collection of theories into a category. It's both a kind of morphism of categories, while I do not want to talk about um, the all extensions that turn one T into some T prime. This is not 
in, in my view here a useful question. Um, of course, I can ask about all extensions of T, which happen to make T equivalent, Morita equivalent to T prime. But um, yeah, usually you will have a T and add something to it and then give the result an name T prime. Okay. So, um, um, okay, I think I really have to hurry up, sorry. <laughs> Um, here are examples of uh, extensions. For example, a quotient of a theory is always an extension. I write Q for a quotient where Q is just uh, some axioms. So new axioms is, uh, is an extension and it's called a quotient. And a concrete example to maybe keep in mind is if I start with the theory of rings and add an R algebra structure to it for some external ring R. This is, uh, typical example of an extension of theories for me. And of course, I can always add two theories that have nothing to do with each other. I can also um, I can view T2 as an extension of T1 and add them together. And here's um, an important theorem about um, these extensions, namely, um, it says that they actually suffice to present any geometric morphism. So every geometric morphism um, over some um, topos with a given uh, classified theory is of the form uh, of uh, such a forgetful um, geometric morphism for some extension. And um, almost even more important, um, this geometric morphism might be localic, but might even be an embedding. And in these cases, I get that E is a localic extension. Uh, um, or respectively a quotient. So quotient means I only add axioms, so no, no new sorts and no new symbols, and localic just means no new sorts. And I think that um, this um, three-step uh, generalization or a special specialization from general extensions to localic extensions to quotients um, this seems um, quite important to me. Um, yeah, maybe it will, it will show up again in the talk. Um, okay, let's now be optimistic and just start to build our theory T for the topos E, which is covered by these classifying toposes. Um, yeah, let's see what we have. So these are open and let's give them the name EI. And that they're open means it is the open subtopos um, corresponding to some UI, where UI are subterminal objects in E. Opens of E are subterminal objects. And um, so we have that the terminal object of E is the join of these UI as subobjects of the terminal object in E. And um, from this, we can see that our theory T must have uh, propositions uh, for these UI, for these subterminal objects, because these are internal truth values. So uh, uh, a classified theory for E must have, uh, yeah, it, it is known that it must be able to express uh, these, um, these truth values by some closed geometric formulas. And we can just as well assume that it, they are actual proposition symbols. So we have these proposition symbols pi here, and since the join of the ui is the whole uh, topos, uh, we know that this has to be derivable. So um, the, the disjunction of the pi has to be true in our theory. Okay, this is something we can start with with our theory t, but what else? Maybe is it true that the theory t also contains all the theories ti? And here's the reason why this is not uh, true in general. Namely, um, there is no canonical TI model in all of E. Only in a part of E, namely the open part EI. So TI cannot contain, uh, no, T cannot contain all of the theory TI. Instead, it should contain something. It should only contain something which we might want to call ti if pi is true. 
right? So wherever, or internally speaking, if PI is true, we want to have a model of TR. And um, this informal notion is um, made precise here. I uh, call it conditional extension. If we have an extension E of um, some theory T plus phi, where phi, it was a proposition symbol above, now I say it can be a closed geometric formula. So any formula of T is good enough. So if we have an extension E of this, then we can uh, form T plus E over phi, which we should read as T plus E if phi is true. So a model of this should be a model of T plus a model of extension along the theory extension E, but only wherever the T model satisfies the formula phi. An E model if phi is true. And here's the construction E over phi, this, con uh, this conditionalized extension um, has the sorts of E. We can actually add the sorts, but we have to make sure that the sorts are no um, superfluous data. So if phi is false, then we actually don't want to add the sort. And for this, we uh, force the sort to be empty in case phi is true. That is, um, we add also an axiom if there exists something in this sort A with no special condition, then phi must be true. And quite similarly for relation symbols, if there exists something which makes the relation true, then this can only be the case of phi is true. And um, for the axioms of E, um, it's quite simple. Um, yeah, uh, if we would uh, want to add an axiom psi and take sky in some context, then we instead um, add the axiom psi and phi. Okay. And a short remark, uh, I didn't mention function symbols here. That's because they need a bit more work. But uh, keep in mind that uh, function symbols are, in a sense, not really needed in geometric theories. You can always um, form, uh, you can always transform them into relation symbols. You need to form a few more axioms uh, to say that your relation symbols are functional, but um, they're not really needed function symbols. But um, it can be done. It's just a bit more work. Okay, so here are examples. Um, we can now. Um, write down a theory which is classified by the disjoint union of two classifying toposes. Namely, uh, we start with two proposition symbols for these two open uh, parts, which are also closed. Uh, so we take proposition symbols uh, P1 and P2. Now we ask that one of them is true. Then we also ask that they are not both true because there's no intersection. And now, up to now, we have only presented a uh, discrete two-point space. But now we can add T1 over the one proposition symbol and T2 over the other. This is an example which is um, also included in The Elephant by Johnson. Johnson but um, it is, uh, yeah, it's not with this uh, construction. So this is just the first example how to, to apply this construction here. And um, a second example, the Sierpinski cone. Or as cone for short. Is you take a topos and you add one closed point to this topos. I.e. you make your topos in an open part of a new topos where you have one extra point. And this is um, even simpler. Uh, we only need one proposition symbol P, and then we add T over this P. Okay, um, yeah, there will be a bonus question. Uh, what does uh, this thing in general actually present? What does the topos look like? But I don't have time now. Um, because we want to uh, come this to this general situation where E is covered by open subtopologies EI, and there we need a presentation 
of this whole um, system of subtopos here of their um, iterated intersections and for this um, well uh, you could think we start with uh, theories t1 t2 t3 to present these um, these uh, uh, basic uh, open subtopuses here but instead let's start with one theory t0 and already take extensions of this t0 to present the open subtopuses and this is just um, to um, be able to take a common part of of all the theories I want to talk about out. For example, in the case of the um, uh, risky topos, I want to take out of the whole construction the common part of um, um, that I want to talk about the local ring, and only want to say that the extra structure of the local ring has to be glued in an appropriate way. So this goes on to the right somehow. So something like E12 will appear here which is the extension that turns the previous things into a presentation of E1 intersected with E2. So in general, we need a definition of a system of theory extensions. And um, because I don't think of theories as um, objects of a category, I don't want to call it a diagram of theory extensions, but it feels like a diagram of theory extensions. So a system of theory extensions um, is something that looks like this. I have a base theory T0, and then I add the sum of a lot of other things to it. And these things can have complicated interdependencies. So they are indexed by not, ne not necessarily a natural number or something, but they are indexed by any partial order. And uh, to be clear on this EI, this EI is then an extension of um, everything before. So the base theory plus uh, for all j smaller than i j. So this is a notion of a system of theory extensions, and then we can uh, define a notion of a system of presentations of such subtoposes. And um, here's the theorem. Um, I think you can say that in one or two minutes, yes. Um, so uh, the theorem starts with, um, we have a base theory T0, and we take any model of the base theory in our topos, and of course, we assume as before that topos is covered by open subtopuses. And that we have such a system of presentations of the intersections of these open subtopuses. So this index S here is supposed to be a finite subset of the, of the index set I. And I denoted it like this. So this is supposed to just mean S is a finite inhabited subset. Um, so for all these um, intersections, we need a presentation. Um, excuse me, this is wrong. I wanted to write um, the presentation consists of a theory extensions, a theory extension and a model extension, which turns all the previous parts of models into a classifier into, into a universal model in this intersected topics. Okay, and then E classify something which I can write down like this. It can be written a tiny bit shorter if you put um, the proposition symbols here in the base theory, but um, I can't talk about that now. So we take the base theory, we add proposition symbols, which we knew we had to add. We add that um, one of them is true and no two uh, different ones um, can be true together. And then we can add all these extensions over the appropriate conjunction of these proposition symbols. So, um, the principle is that we have to take our system of presentations and then conditionalize all these theory extensions that appear here. And we conditionalize them um, over these um, proposition symbols and then we can add this and there's also a similar looking description of uh, the universal model. And yes, this is then our um, classified theory which presents the topos E. Uh, the only thing that, um, so no time for a proof sketch, but um, application to the risky topos, um, let me just say it in one sentence. So if I have um, the scheme X, then the big risky topos is actually covered by these big risky topos of the affine schemes. And then um, the big risky topos classifies something. So this might still look somehow a bit scary because we have to take all uh, finite uh, intersections of, of these open subtopuses, but it turns out since I can here take local um, extensions of the base theory of local rings, 
because I only have to extend it to the theory of local AI algebras, and this AI algebra structure is a local uh, um, is a locality extension of the theory of local rings. And this means that I only have to look at um, the intersections of every two open subtopuses. And um, yeah, it turns out that the big first series topos of a non-defined scheme classifies local rings, uh, which are um, an AI algebra for some i. So <laughs> with um, AI algebra structure, and uh, these write for some i, which is supposed to mean that it has to be a, a, such a structure for some i. And if it has a, such a structure for two i and j, then they have to be compatible and a bit more. But there's no really short way uh, to say it's the theory of something very short. Way. OK, uh, thanks for your attention. Thanks a lot.